In this video, we're going to learn how to use the uh, appearance panel and effects to create rounded corners and an offset path. First, I'm going to start by creating a rectangle. I like to use red, a red stroke and no fill because it's easier to see the artwork underneath it. We're going to go to Effect, Stylize, Round Corners. Now you'll notice here that these round corners are live. We can turn them on and off, we can adjust them. So that's one of the, the beauties of using effects is that you can toggle them on and off and adjust them throughout the, the course of your design project. Now I'm going to draw the leaves. If you press the Option key while clicking on an anchor point, you can convert it from a smooth point to a corner point or vice versa. Okay, now I have my two shapes. I'm going to select them both and then go to the Align panel and click Unite. But you'll notice that when I do that, the rounded rectangles corners are not rounded anymore, they're square. And that's because when you use the Unite tool or the Unite function of the Pathfinder panel, the objects that you're uniting, they take on the appearance or the effects of the topmost object. And in this case, the topmost object didn't have rounded corners. So that meant that this bottom rectangle lost its rounded corners. So we need to expand the rounded corners. We're going to go to Object, Expand Appearance, and you'll notice here by just looking at the anchor points, you'll notice that they're not they're not like live rounded anymore. The, the anchor point colored its a little bit hard to see because it's yellow. Let me make it a different color so it's, it's easier to see. I'll make it black. Here there's just the one anchor point up here, but when we go to expand the appearance, you'll notice that there's now two here. So this is no longer a live effect. But now we can successfully use the Pathfinder panel to get the shape that we want. I'm going to give this a green color using the eyedropper panel. And now I'm going to go back to the appearance panel and I'm going to add a new stroke. I guess I could have just used the one that was already there. I'll color it green. Now we're going to go back to the effects, effects, path, offset path, Now you'll notice here, if I turn off the original image that we're tracing, that has offset that stroke. If you wanted to, you could add a second stroke so that the area right in here wouldn't be transparent. So I'll show you how to do that. Back to the appearance panel, add a new stroke. And the new stroke got added to the top of the list here, which means it's in the top of the stacking order, but it also didn't have any of the effects applied to it. So what we're going to do, that's the stroke that we, we know we want to work with, we're going to change it white, and we're going to move it to the bottom of the stacking order by just dragging it below the fill. Then we're just going to increase the stroke weight a few points. 
And I want to demonstrate something here. If we move it above the fill, you can see that it kind of halfway encroaches over the f like halfway over the fill and halfway over the blank area between that stroke and the green stroke next to it. That could be useful depending on the design that you have, but in this case, I just wanted to show you that the uh, the stroke is aligned is aligned partially over each area there. So I'm going to move this back to the bottom of the stacking order. And I'm just going to bump up that stroke weight until that stroke totally fills the area between the green fill and the green stroke. 